This is Dr. J. Welcome to Thesis in 101, where the road is long and friends are few. In this series, we cover tips and tricks to help you on your research journey. If you are interested and you would like to see more videos like this, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Show me some love. Today's focus is on research design approaches. As a reminder, research design is a blueprint for conducting research. It is a plan we create to collect what we need in the most efficient and cheapest way. In our previous tutorial, we spoke about philosophies and its associated assumptions and delimitations. Today, our focus is on research approaches. This may also be referred to as inferential logics. Now, the point of research is to contribute to knowledge. We do this by observing, critically thinking about what we have observed and coming up with a theoretical explanation. This theoretical explanation is our contribution to knowledge. In order to get to that theoretical explanation, we need to make inferences. Making inferences is nothing new to the human being. For instance, you walk into a lecture hall where they teach psychology. You notice that Dave, your childhood crush, is sitting in the front row intently listening and passionately taking note. Since this is a psychology class and Dave is taking the class, you are making an inference that Dave studies psychology. There are four different types of inferential logics, namely deduction, induction, abduction, and retroduction. Before I get into the differences between them, let me just land the concept of how you systematically go about creating your contribution to knowledge through these inferential logics. Think of an inferential logic as an equation with three variables, A plus B equals C. A and B being things like your literature review, data collection, and data analysis, and C being, well, your theoretical explanation. So let's see what A plus B equals C mean in a research study that focused the deductive approach. A is your rule, B your case, and C your result. For example, the rule is that all men are mortal. This is Dave. Dave is a man. Since Dave is a man and all men are mortal, we can make an inference that Dave is a mortal. I love saying the word mortal. Makes me sound Scottish. So what does this look like in an actual deductive study? If you recall, we said that a researcher aims to contribute to knowledge. We also said that a contribution to knowledge is in the form of a theoretical explanation. In a deductive study, we arrive at our theoretical explanation by starting our research process with a rule or a theory. We pick up these rules or theories through things like our literature review. The aim of the deductive researcher is to infer logical implications of these rules or theories. In other words, you will take these theories you have familiarized yourself with and make predictions about them in a specific setting. These predictions are often referred to as hypotheses. As a deductive researcher, you now have to collect relevant data to test your hypothesis. Whether your hypothesis is supported or not supported, it is still a contribution to knowledge. Now let's focus what A plus B equals C mean in a research study that follows the inductive approach. A is your result, B your case, and C is your rule. As you can see, it is the inverse of the deductive approach. For example, do you remember Dave? Hi Dave. Dave is a mortal. Dave is also a man. Since Dave is a man and Dave is also a mortal, therefore all men must be mortal. Okay, here's a danger zone alert though. When it comes to inductive reasoning, we have to be really careful about the rules we are inferring. For example, this is still Dave. Dave is still a man, but Dave eats meat. Since Dave is a man, and Dave eats meat, therefore all men eat meat? Mm. See, this is what we call an unsound argument. We know this because we have vegans and vegetarians, so if you are a researcher that follows the inductive approach, you must ensure that your generalization, i.e. the theory or the rule that you are contributing to knowledge, is rooted in a sound argument. Now let's focus on the process of doing inductive research. Since induction is the inverse approach of deduction, we will start the research process by observing our phenomenon. We do this to identify patterns. As an inductive researcher, your observation must be done until such time you are scientifically convinced of the pattern. Based on this pattern, you may now come up with rules or theories. Now let's focus on what A plus B equals C mean in a research study that follows the abductive approach. A is your rule, B your result, and C your case. If you pass primary school mathematics, you may notice a pattern in the equation. Same constructs, just different order. If you recall, we are looking at research approaches. The order of the equation is giving you an indication of the systematic approach or process you need to follow in order for you to derive at your contribution to knowledge. So let's check in what the abductive approach is telling us about Dave. Hi Dave! 
We know that all men are mortal. We know that Dave is immortal. Since Dave is immortal, and all men are mortal, therefore Dave must be a man. In an abductive study, the researcher aims to provide the best possible explanation for what they have observed, even if that means the observation is incomplete. Now, by no means am I saying collect insufficient data and call it abductive. That's not what I'm saying at all. To best explain what I mean by incomplete observation, I'll use an everyday example. This is you. You're looking for your cheesecake. Your cheesecake is missing. You also have a wife with a sweet tooth who takes married in community of property very seriously. Now, you didn't witness your wife eat the cheesecake in complete observation, but based on all the information, including that she's now feverishly and uncharacteristically helping you search for your missing dessert, your best possible explanation of what happened to your cheesecake is that she ate it. Abductive reasoning is probably the most common type of reasoning we humans apply to navigate everyday life. We use incomplete observations to draw conclusions. Some of us even hold on to our original conclusions even if new evidence are pointing in the opposite direction. Hail to the person who can change their mind based on new evidence. Sorry for going off topic, I was accused of stealing something out of a fridge. The abductive researcher starts the research process with an observation that is a little surprising or unexpected. In other words, it didn't make a prediction about this finding, but what they are seeing is significantly related to their research problem. So based on what they are observing and the rules or theories that they already know, they come up with the best possible explanation of what is unfolding. Now let's focus on what A plus B equals C mean in the research study that follows the retroductive approach. A is a result, B is a case, and C ooh, is cause. This is new. Again, let's check in with Dave. Oh good heavens, what happened to Dave? I think we've established that Dave indeed was a mortal. Because you know, he is now dead. So from a retroductive perspective, we are really interested in understanding what killed Dave. The retroductive researcher aims to understand why things are the way they are, the causes of what they are observing. This could be derived by using both inductive and deductive research approaches. At the end of the day, your research approach is governed by what contribution you would like to make to knowledge. That's all for me today. If you have a question, please add it to the comment section like this share this, subscribe to this. This is Dr. J signing off.